and the camera's wonky. There we go. Straighten you up. Okay, hi, so good evening. Welcome to Live at Five, Hatha Yoga. With me, Hatha Yoga teacher, Leslie Wilson. So another glorious day that we've had. Um, absolutely beautiful weather. So lovely. Um, what more is there to say? You know, it's, uh, it's strange having so much time off. I'm normally so, you know, full on six days a week, but uh, yeah, this slower pace of life is, um, yeah, it's taken a bit of getting used to, but when the sun's shining, it does make life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go have a seat on the mat, see who joins me, if anyone. <clears throat> got sandy feet again because I've been on the beach. So um, nothing too strenuous this evening, nice sort of gentle-ish class. Um, yeah, I didn't want to do anything too jumpy around you because probably will get too hot and bothered. <laughs> so I thought we'd just do something a little bit, um, so mainly seated, lying down and seated today, but a good stretchy class, so that'll be good. And if there's anything you don't want to do, then you don't need to do it. Um, anything that doesn't feel right, don't do it. Um, just dip in and out of what you wish to do personally, whatever you, whatever your body feels that you need today. So, we're going to begin. <clears throat> Namaste. And welcome. So, we're going to begin with our pranayama and today we're going to be doing um, Shitali Pranayama, which is the cooling breath. Now for anyone that um, we have done this once before, the last time we had a really hot day, we did a cooling breath. So I'll just briefly explain why it's called that. Um, so it's it literally does cool the mouth down and it also helps um, the mouth produce saliva within within the mouth. So ideally you need to make, need, need let me try and get the words out, need to try and make a tube with the tongue. And we're going to be breathing in through that tube. If you can't do that, then just make an O shape with the lips. So if I come a little bit closer, uh, don't be offended if I stick my tongue out to you. Hello. Hi, Karen. So, Shitali Pranayama, the cooling breath. This is how we do it. Hopefully you could see that I was making a tube with my tongue. There we go. Okay, and then you say so you breathe in through the little tube. If you can't make a, hi Tina, if you can't make a tube with the tongue, then you make an O shape with the mouth. Okay, let's hope that Facebook Live doesn't choose to um, ca ca catch me on that still. As you scroll through, so I look a bit of a idiot. Anyway, so we breathe in through the tube or through the O shape, so through the mouth, and then we pull the tongue back into the mouth, breathe out through the nostrils. So let's bring the hands into chin mudra, connecting together forefinger and thumb, extending away the other three fingers, and then we can uh, straighten the spine, lift the crown of the head, and then we can begin with shitali pranayama. So just extending the tongue out, making a tube. Draw the tongue in, close the mouth, breathe out through the nostrils. And you'll notice that while you're working with this, the mouth does actually cool down. And it makes me need to swallow a bit more too.
and then no need to rush or hurry, but the next time that you breathe out through the nostrils, you can release Shitali Pranayama, allow the tongue to relax. When you have finished, let's release Chin Mudra with the hands, and then we're going to come down onto the mat just for a, a little lie down. Okay, so stretching away the legs as per usual, if the lower back allows, allow a nice big space between the heels, allowing the feet to just flop apart. And if that's uncomfortable, you can take the feet wide, bring the knees in together, and just uh, legs are still nice and relaxed. And then just have the arms resting a little way away from the sides of the body, palms turned up towards the ceiling, fingers lightly curled. So if the neck allows, you can lift the head, look down the centre of the body, rest the head back down on the mat, close the eyes if you haven't already done so, and then just a couple of nice steady deep breaths here. And then let's hug the knees in towards the chest, clasp the hands around the outside of the shins, let's start easing out the back, just rocking gently from side to side, head and knees going in the same direction. So just giving the spine a gentle massage, keeping it nice and smooth and slow and keep breathing. And then we can start to ease out the neck, so still rocking from side to side, Head going in one direction, knees in the other. And then we can come back to centre. Let's place the two hands on the kneecaps with both knees going in the same direction. We can circle the knees. So just drawing slow, um, smooth, large circles with the knees. So we're just warming up the hips and uh, lower abdomen, lower spine. Try and keep them nice and large and smooth. And then going back the other way. And then still circling the knees, but now let's send them off in opposite directions from each other. And then let's bring the knees back to centre. Let's pop the two feet flat down on the mat now, the heels just underneath the buttocks, making sure the feet are hip width apart, and then take the arms down by the sides of the body, palms facing downwards. So we're going to warm up with a gentle pelvic tilt. So when you next breathe out, round the spine, tilting the pelvis forwards. And when you breathe in, arch the spine, tilting the pelvis backwards. Breathing out, rounding the spine, pelvis comes forwards. And breathing in, arching the spine and the pelvis tilts backwards. So just carry on with your own breathing rate, just the rocking back and forth of the pelvis with the breath.
we can release this activity with the spine, coming into a neutral position. Keep the face looking up at the ceiling now as we move on to work with the bridge and then the flowing bridge. So when you next take a breath in, push down on the soles of the feet, the backs of the arms and the shoulder blades, lifting the hips up as high as you can. And then when you breathe out, just lower the hips all the way back down, lowering the spine down one vertebra at a time. So breathing in, lifting up as high as you can, keeping it nice and strong and then breathing out, rolling smoothly down. So just working with your own breathing rate, breathing in when you lift up. And then breathing out as you lower gently down. And the next time that you breathe in and lift up, float the hands up towards the ceiling and take them all the way back to the wall behind you. And then when you breathe out, float the hips back down and float the arms back down by the sides of the body. So breathing in, lifting up, arms up and back. And then breathing out, lowering everything gently back down. And then just continue in this way with your own breath. And then no need to rush or hurry, but the next time that you breathe out and lower the hips and lower the arms, you can release this activity. So we're going to work with a hip opener. So let's bring the um, outer edge of the right foot and place it on the left thigh. So you can take hold of that right ankle using the left hand to support it, and then place the right hand somewhere on the, either on the right knee or further up the leg if you wish. And then when you next breathe out, just push that knee away from you, so opening up that right hip. And then when you breathe in, allow it to come back. So breathing out, push it away. Breathing in to come back. Breathing out, push it away. Breathing in to come back. Breathing out, push it away. Breathing in to come back. Last one, breathe out, push it away. And then breath in to let it come back. So we're going to keep that right foot where it is. Lift the head now. Put the right hand through the triangle gap. Join the hands together around the back of the left thigh. And then we're going to rest the head back down on the mat. And then just draw the left thigh in towards the chest. So you're opening up the right hip and also stretching the piriformis muscle. <coughs> And then let's straighten the left leg. Keep that left leg flexed. So you should be getting a stretch down the back of the left hamstring. And you may want to take hold of the leg closer towards the ankle and draw that leg in towards you. Or you may want to keep the hands where they were. It's totally fine, whichever feels best for you. And then we're going to bend the left leg we're going to swap sides now, so the right foot goes down on the mat. Outer edge of the left foot will come and rest on the right thigh. So you can use the right hand to support the left ankle. And then once again, left hand placed somewhere on the left thigh or the knee, wherever is comfortable for you. And then when you breathe out, push that left knee away from you. And breathing in, bring it back in. Breathing out, push it away. Breathing in, back in. Breathing out, push away. 
breath in to come back. Breathing out, push away. Breathing in to come back. Last one, breathing out, push the leg away. And breathing in, allow it to come back. So we lift the head now. It's the left hand that goes through the triangle gap this time. Join the hands around the back of the right thigh. Rest the head back down on the mat. Draw the right thigh in towards the chest. So you're opening up the left hip now. And then we're going to straighten the left, uh, right leg, sorry, and draw that leg in towards you. Keep your right foot flexed so that you're stretching out. You'll probably feel it on the hamstring, maybe the back of the calf. And you might want to take hold of the leg closer towards the ankle and draw that leg in towards you, but don't feel that you have to. Releasing, place both the feet back down on the mat. We're going to work with a twist, but we'll have a little crunch in there as well. However, if you've got neck or shoulder injuries, I wouldn't do the crunch. Okay, so place the hands, interlace the fingers and place the hands behind the back of the head, if that feels okay. If not, release the hands from out there and just put them out to the side, but I wouldn't do the crunchy bit, so that's optional. And then you can keep the feet on the mat, or if you prefer, you can hug the knees closer in towards the chest, whichever feels more comfortable for you. And then when you next breathe out, take the knees over to the right. So if the neck feels okay, you can lift the head and shoulders. So all this work should be coming from these um, core muscles in the side, not from the neck. So you shouldn't feel any discomfort. If you do, then you need to put the head back down. So rest the head down, take a breath in, bring the knees back to centre. And then breathing out, take the knees over to the left. And then if you're doing it, we'll come up into a crunch. And then lower down again, breath in, bring the knees back to centre. We'll do one more to each side. So breathing out, take the knees back over to the right. And then a little crunch. And then lower the head, take a breath in, come back to centre. Breathing out, take the knees back over to the left. And then crunch. And then rest the head back down. So we can, we're kind of halfway here, aren't we, ish? We're going to roll over onto our left side now. <coughs> so I'm going to come up onto my left elbow and rest my head in my hand. But if that's uncomfortable for you, for whatever reason, you can extend that left arm out, rest the head on the, on, the, um, on the upper arm, use it as a cushion. So you want one foot stacked on top of the other. <clears throat> nice straight line between the soles of the feet and the crown of the head. And you can pop that right hand on the mat in front of the chest just to give you a bit more stability, a bit more balance. So from here, we're gonna, we're gonna lift the right leg. So you want the toes pointing, almost try and rotate them so they're pointing down to the floor. That's not really possible, but that's, that's the way, rather than have the toes up, okay? So you probably feel that in the glutes in there. Some people, this gives them cramp in the hips, so if that's the case, just lower the leg slightly. And then we just keep breathing. Got wobbly leg syndrome today. And then we'll have a little bend in the left knee now, roll back a tiny bit onto the left hip. Now we can point the right toes up to the ceiling, take the right leg up, and then somewhere around the back of the thigh or wherever feels comfortable for you, you can take hold of the right leg. Draw the right leg in towards you. Try and keep the foot flexed if you can, because that'll give you a stretch on the hamstring. And then release the right leg. So straighten both the legs again. Have both the legs um, stacked on one, one stacked on top of the other. And then we're going to lift both the legs. So 
so I keep getting notifications on my watch. I should have put my phone on do not disturb. And then trying to keep the feet and knees lifted off the ground. We're going to hug the knees in towards the chest. So squeeze the knees in together, using the muscles of the inner thighs to draw the knees nice and tight in together. And then we'll stretch the legs away again. So lower both the legs. So now we're going to take the right leg and bend it and place the right, um, right knee on the mat in front of the straight left leg. And then let's lift the left leg. So we're working that inner thigh muscle. lower the left leg so you can roll over onto your right side I'm going to flip ends so that I don't have my back to you so coming over onto the right side now same thing all over again so straighten both the legs one foot stacked on top of the other and then either resting on the um, elbow or you can rest your head on the upper arm place that left hand on the mat in front of you and then we'll lift the left leg. Remember to try and point the toes down towards the ground as opposed to up towards the ceiling. And then just hold it here. Unless, of course, you get cramp and then just lower the leg. And then we're going to rotate the left toes up towards the ceiling. Have a little bend in the right knee. Roll back slightly onto that right hip. And then we're going to take that left leg up towards the ceiling. Remember to keep the foot flexed. And then taking hold of the back of the thigh, behind the knee, calf muscle, foot, ankle, wherever feels right for you. And then just pull that um, left leg towards you. And then you can lower the left leg. So straighten both the legs now, one foot stacked on top of the other, and then we're gonna lift both the legs. And then aiming to keep the knees and feet lifted off the ground, Let's hug the knees in towards the chest. Use the inner thigh muscles to squeeze the knees in nice and tight together. And then stretch them away. Lower the legs, bend the left leg and place the bent left leg on the mat down in front of the straight right leg. And then we'll lift the right leg legs really bouncing and then we can lower the right leg so we're going to stay here on our right side we probably might need to scooch down you're going to need quite a bit of space because we're going to work with our universal spinal twist so we're going to come down onto the right side lay the head on the mat this time and then extend the right arm out in front of you with the palm facing up towards the ceiling I'm not sure how much room I've got here then we're going to extend the left hand out sorry a bit of sand and place the left palm on top of the right palm. So we're gonna use this left hand to trace a semicircle up above the top of the head, and then eventually take the arms so that they're out wide at right angles to the sides of the body. If you're not sure what I mean, I'm gonna do it now. And so you can just watch. So just using the fingertips of the left hand to draw a semicircle. Oh, there's the skirting board. 
and then eventually, so obviously the head will follow. So you're really opening up across that chest. And then you're going to bring the hand up above the head back the same way. Now, if you've got shoulder injuries or issues, you may find at some point that that arm has to lift. If that's the case, allow it to happen. Don't try and force the fingertips to stay on the floor. So we'll just do a few more of these on this side. And let's make this the last one. So the next time that the two hands join together, you can release this activity. <clears throat> and then we're going to roll over onto our left side and do the same on the left side. I did forget to say, the knees are bent when you're doing this. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable. So resting the head down on the mat. So extending the left arm out in front of you with the palm facing up to the ceiling and then bring the right hand and place it so the palms are together. And then this time it's the right hand that draws the semicircle, opening up across the front of the chest as you come round. And remember, if that hand has to leave the mat for any reason, it's not the end of the world. You're still giving the shoulders a really good stretch and opening everything up across the front of the chest. So quite a strong spinal twist, but really good for spine flexibility. And obviously we're supported by the floor, so you're not likely to injure yourself. And then we can just do, make this the last one. Okay, and then we can roll over onto our backs. Hug the knees in towards the chest and clasp the hands underneath the knees, unless it doesn't suit you, in which case just rock from side to side. Otherwise, we can just rock backwards and forwards a few times. come up to a seated position. So, so coming into Sukhasana, if it's comfortable for you, just cross leg position, sorry. Um, if that doesn't work for you, then you can just um, come and sit up in, uh, maybe have the legs extended, space between the heels. So we're gonna work with our Kundalini Sufi grind. I'm going with a kind of mellow vibe today. Hope that's all right with everyone. So just placing the hands on the legs and then we can start to rotate the chest. So drawing big circles with the rib cage. And then we can introduce the breath. So breathing in as you come forward and breathing out as you come backwards, rounding the spine. Breathing in as you come forwards and breathing out as you come back. So you can close the eyes, turns this into like a moving meditation. And then let's go back in the opposite direction. and then just come on back to centre. So uncross the legs, we've had them crossed. 
and just bring the soles of the feet together now. Bring them in nice and close to the body. We're going to come into cobbler's pose, our Baddha We're also going to take hold of the ankles or the feet or wherever is comfortable for you. And we're going to use the elbows and the lower arms on the exhalation to encourage those knees down closer towards the ground. And then breathing in, allow them to come back in. So we're really opening up the hips here. So breathing out, pushing down. Breathing in, letting them come back. Breathing out, pushing down, breathing in to come back, breathing out, pushing down, breathing in to come back. And then we're going to hook the hands together around the outside of the feet and just encourage those knees down. So turn the gaze down now to look at the big toes, keep the spine nice and straight. So stretching out along the back of the neck. So coming into full cobbler's pose. And then we can release. Okay, so we're gonna work with some wide leg stretches. I said it wasn't gonna be jumpy about dynamic, but I didn't say it wasn't gonna be stretchy. So coming onto the sit bones, taking the legs as wide as is comfortable for you. And remember, you can tuck the left leg in while we stretch out over the right leg and vice versa. So you can do that if that eases the pressure on the inner thighs. So stretching out over the right leg, first of all. Turn the body so it's facing out over the right thigh. So we're going to take a breath in, straighten the spine. Breathing out, starting to ease the right side of the chest down towards the right thigh. <clears throat> Um, not all of you will be chest to thigh, and that's absolutely fine. As long as you're feeling a stretch up the back of the right leg, then you know you're working in the right way. So just allow that muscle to customise to the stretch, and then you can maybe allow the breath to take you in a bit deeper, if that works for you. And then take a breath in, lift the head, slowly bring the hands back in towards the body. So untuck the left leg if you've had it tucked in, and then obviously you need to tuck the right leg in if you are tucking the legs. So upper body facing out over the left leg this time, hands resting on the left leg. Take a breath in, straighten the spine, breathing out, starting to ease the left side of the chest down towards the left thigh. And remember, it doesn't matter where you are in comparison to anyone else. The benefits of being on Facebook Live is that no one else can see what you're doing. You might be sitting there with a gym. No one would know. And then obviously just keep breathing whilst you're here. Take a breath in, lift the head, come all the way back to centre. Our side stretch now. So bring the hands so the palm is facing, the right hand, sorry, the palm is facing up towards the ceiling and place that either um, on the mat in front of the calf muscle or you can slide the hand underneath, whichever suits you best. Take that left arm around the back. So reach in towards the right hip. Bring the right um, shoulder as close to the right thigh as your body will allow. And then keeping that left shoulder back, Bring the left arm up and across. Some of us will be able to take hold of the feet, but not all of us. This is where having big feet and long arms comes in really handy. And then take a breath in all the way back up, give the shoulders a little shrug, 
And then we can do the same on this side as well. Now on the left side, so the left hand comes and rests on the mat, either in frontal or underneath the left calf. Nice big sweep around with the left hand. Bring the right shoulder back. Sorry, the right hand that was. But it changes, does it? Right, so bring the left shoulder as close to the left thigh as your body will allow. Keep the right shoulder back and then bring the right arm up and across. Take hold of that right foot. So really, really big, strong stretch down the side of the body. And then take a breath in and come all the way back up. So a big strong stretch now, taking the legs as wide as is comfortable for you, making sure you come onto the sit bones. And this is one of those stretches that you need to be careful with your lower back as well. So any, um, any signs of uh, pulling on the lower back and then just sit back up again. So we'll have the hands resting on the mat. Take a breath in, straighten the spine breathing out, starting to walk the hands away. Some of us will be able to come onto the elbows, some of us won't, but it really is all about your own personal progress. And then we can use the breath to soften down a little bit deeper, if your body will allow, but please don't force yourselves. So just using the breath to soften down, if your body will allow. And then obviously just keep breathing. It's important to continue to breathe. Sometimes people make the mistake of holding their breath because they're concentrating so hard. And then take a breath in, lift the head, walk the hands back in towards the body. Let's bring the hands now, hip the hands underneath the knees, bring the legs back in together. So we're going to come back into a cross leg position with the right leg in front, but we're only positioning. So we're going to um, untuck the left foot and bring it out to the left side of us. So you want the sole of the right foot resting on the left thigh, and then we're going to bring this right hand out to the side of us. So we're sitting primarily on the right hip or the right buttock and then bring the left hand and place it on the right knee. So we're going to work with our mermaid twist. So take a breath in, straighten the spine, breathing out, twist from the waist, turn to look over the right shoulder, just hold it there, keep breathing. And then take a breath in, come all the way back to centre. So coming into our stargazer pose now. So still leaning on that right hand and keeping the legs as they are. So bring the left hand down in front of um, in front of that right leg now. When you take a breath in, make a big semicircle with the hands. Come up onto the knees, push the hips forward, take the arm back. And then as you breathe out, slowly coming back down the way you went up. And I'm sure that looks amazing, so we'll do it again. So breath in, come up. And breathing out, coming all the way back down. So hands either side of the right leg, coming into animal relaxation. So start to walk the hands away from the body. Maybe the chest will come and rest on the thigh. Maybe the head will reach the mat. And then just have a few breaths here. And then lift the head, take a breath in, slowly start to walk the hands back in towards the body. So we're going to come back into cross leg position, left leg in front this time, untuck the right leg, bring it out to the right. So sole of the left foot resting on the, on the right thigh, coming out and um, just placing that left hand out to the side of us now. So sitting on the, um, on the left buttock this time. 
and then we can bring that right hand and rest it on the left knee. Take a breath in, straighten the spine. Breathing out, twist from the waist, turn to look over the left shoulder, just hold it there. Don't forget to breathe. And then take a breath in, come all the way back to centre. So stargazer pose on this side now. So the legs stay where they are, left hand stood out to the side, right hand comes down in front of the left ankle. Take a breath in, draw that semicircle, come up onto the knees, push the hips forward. And then breathing out, coming all the way back down. So we'll do another one on this side, breath in, come up. And then breathing out, coming all the way back down. Hands either side of the left leg this time, start to walk the hands away from the body. Maybe the chest comes to the thigh, maybe the forehead to the mat or the floor. And then lift the head, take a breath in, start to walk the hands back in towards the body. And then we're going to come into, we're going to come up onto the knees, sit back on the heels. I'm just looking at the time now, I can't believe where the time actually goes when I'm teaching. Okay. So we are going to work with our little vinyasa flow. So if you can't sit back on the knees like this because it puts too much pressure on the front of the ankles, you can come up onto the knees itself and just bring the hands into prayer position and start from there. Otherwise, sit down on the heels, kneeling down, bring the hands into Anjali Mudra, a prayer position at the heart centre. Take a breath in, come up onto the knees, stretch the hands all the way up to the ceiling. As you breathe out, sit back down on the heels, stretch away the hands, bring the forehead to the mat into pose of swan. As you breathe in, come up into cat. Separate the feet, tuck the toes under, straighten the legs as you breathe out into down dog. Breath in, come back onto the knees into cat. Breathing out, pushing back into swan. Breath in, come up onto the knees, bring the palms of the hands together and breathing out, back to starting position. So breath in to come up. Breathing out into swan. <coughs> Breath in, up into cat. Separate the feet, tuck the toes under, breathe out into down dog. Breath in, down into cat. Breathing out into swan. Breath in to come up onto the knees, palms of the hands come together and breathing out. Prayer position, let's do another one. So breath in to come up. Breathing out into swan. Breath in, up into cat. Separate the feet, tuck the toes under, breathe out into down dog. Breath in, back into cat. Breathing out into swan. Breath in to come all the way up, bring the palms of the hands together and breathing out, prayer position. So we've got a couple of little add-ons that you may or may not like to join in with. I'll show you what they are and then I'll give, you, I'll give you what your options are. So after we have come up into downward facing dog, you can swing through into plank, and then keeping the elbows nice and tucked in, we're gonna chaturanga, quite strong, and then into cobra. From here, we tuck the toes under, push back into down dog. Now, if that really isn't for you, you can just stay in down dog. Or you can stay in cat, whichever is your preference. Or you can just watch, it's up to you. Anyway, so we'll do a couple of those and then move on to something else. So coming up onto the knees, hands all the way up to the ceiling. Sit down on the heels, into swan. Come up into cat. Separate the feet, tuck the toes under. Straighten the legs into down dog. So stay here in down dog if you wish or swing through into plank. Elbows tucked in, chaturanga. Cobra. Tuck the 
toes under, straighten the legs into down dog. If you've been waiting here for everybody, join back in now as we come back into cat. Sit back on the heels into the pose of the swan. Come up onto the knees, bring the palms of the hands together and finish in prayer position. We'll do one more of those and then we we'll move on. So coming all the way up, stretching the hands up to the ceiling. Down into swan. Come up into cat. Separate the feet, tuck the toes under, straighten the legs into down dog. You can stay here in down dog or you can swing through into plank. Elbows stay tucked in, body nice and straight. Chaturanga. Cobra. Tuck the toes under, push back into down dog. If you've been waiting here in down dog, join in back into cat. Back into swan. Come all the way up onto the knees, bring the palms of the hands together and finish in prayer position. I do love a sequence. Okay, so what we're going to do, oh yeah. So a couple of seated balances today. So the first one I'm going to turn sideways and we're going to come into um, the lotus flower. So bring the knees so that they're bent relatively wide apart and then we're going to hook the elbows underneath those knees so the palms are facing up bring the hands into chin mudra and then you can start to walk the feet back bring the feet soles of the feet together so they're almost like prayer position and then balancing on the sit bones and then just breathe And then we can just gently come down. Okay, so <clears throat> balancing bear, baby bear, I can never quite remember what this is called. So keeping the knees bent now, we're going to hook the um, right hand around the sole of the right foot. So the, hand, the, the wrist is on the inside of the foot rather than on the outside. And then we're going to extend the right leg out to the side. Some people will be able to straighten their legs, others won't, it doesn't matter. And again, body proportions have got a lot to do with it as well. And then bring that leg back in. So we can do the same with the left side now. So hook the hand underneath the instep of the left foot and then maybe that left leg will straighten. and then bring the leg back in. So yeah, you probably guess where we're going with this now. So hooking the hands under both the feet. Make sure you're not sat too close to a wall behind you or you've got a soft landing just in case. So just sitting back on the sit bones first of all and just get your balance. And then maybe you can take the legs out. Take them nice and wide. Okay, so if you're feeling fairly confident and well balanced, maybe bring the legs in closer together. And then take them wide again. Bring them into the middle. Take them wide. And then we can just bend the knees. We're going to come into a seated, comfortable position. And then we're going to circle the shoulders. So nice big circles with the shoulders. Making them as big and exaggerated as you can so you're really working those shoulder joints. It's going to be a bit longer before we can all get a massage, so we might as well try and do it ourselves. And then back the other way. And then just relax the shoulders down. So let's squeeze the shoulders up really close to the ears as you take a big breath in. And then big old 
one side, you let them fall away. So breath in and squeeze. One more time. And then let's bring the chin down towards the chest. We'll take the chin up to the right shoulder, back down to the chest, and then up to the left shoulder, back down to the chest. Once more up to the right shoulder, back down to the chest. And once more up to the left shoulder, back down to the chest. And then let's lift the head. We'll take the right ear over to the right shoulder and then bring it back to center. <coughs> left ear to left shoulder. And then back to center. Right ear to right shoulder. Back to center. And left ear to left shoulder and back to centre. Turn the face all the way around to the right and bring it back to centre. All the way around to the left. Back to centre. Once more around to the right and back to centre. And then once more around to the left and then back to centre. So I'd like to invite you now to just um, come into your relaxation posture, Shavasana, or your best version of. So just lying down on the mat. So either stretching away the legs or bend, bending the knees. Take the feet nice and wide, allow the knees to just fall in together. Arms resting a little way away from the sides of the body with the palms turned up towards the ceiling and the fingers lightly curled. <coughs> Excuse me. So if the neck allows, you can lift the head, look down the center of the body, and then just rest the head back down on the mat. Close the eyes if you haven't already done so, and then just take the awareness to the breath. So no need to do anything special with the breath, just allow it to come and go as it wants. Just happening naturally, in and out through the nostrils. And then take your awareness down to your feet. I'm relaxing my feet. My feet are relaxed. I'm relaxing my ankles. My ankles are relaxed. I'm relaxing my lower legs. My lower legs are relaxed. I'm relaxing my knees. My knees are relaxed. I'm relaxing my thighs. My thighs are relaxed. I'm relaxing my hips. My hips are relaxed. I'm relaxing my waist. My waist is relaxed. I'm relaxing my abdomen. My abdomen is relaxed. I'm relaxing my ribcage. My rib cage is relaxed. I'm relaxing my chest. My chest is relaxed. I'm relaxing my spine. My spine is relaxed. I'm relaxing my hands. My hands are relaxed. I'm relaxing my wrists. My wrists are relaxed. I'm relaxing my lower arms. My lower arms are relaxed. I'm relaxing my elbows. My elbows are relaxed. I'm relaxing my upper arms. My upper arms are relaxed. I'm relaxing my shoulders. My shoulders are relaxed. I'm relaxing my neck. My neck is relaxed. I'm relaxing my jaw. My jaw is relaxed. I'm relaxing my face. My face is relaxed. 
I'm relaxing my mind. My mind is relaxed. I'm relaxing my internal organs. My internal organs are relaxed. <coughs> I'm relaxing my entire being. My entire being is relaxed. And so it's nearly time to end this final relaxation. So just gently starting to wake the body up with small movements at first. So perhaps just wiggling the fingers and toes gently. And then you can move on to the joints. So maybe circling the ankles and circling the wrists. Then maybe rolling the head from side to side a couple of times just to wake up the neck. And if you fancy a stretch and a yawn, then you go right ahead. And then keeping the eyes closed for a little while longer, just roll over onto your preferred side and just stay there for a few more moments. And then you can make your way back up to a seated position whenever you're ready. And so we'll finish. Om Shanti and thank you. So thank you very much. Um, as always, really grateful for your continued support. So um, obviously I will be here at five o'clock tomorrow. Whether or not I'm joined by Mr Wilson, who knows. But he's kind of running out of um, novelty things to do now. And uh, he, does, <laughs> he, does, he, does, he does like to be novel. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Anyway, um, I hope you have a lovely rest of the evening and I hope you have a great day tomorrow, wherever you do. And for anyone who wants to join me, I will of course be here at five o'clock tomorrow. Now, I've just remembered it's a bank holiday on Monday, but it's not like we're gonna be going anywhere. So if you would like um, a live at five, then just drop a comment, uh, comment in the comments box and I'll have a look in a minute. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's me signing off for today. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Maybe see some of you at eight o'clock. Maybe I'll take the drum out again. Who knows? My neighbours love my drum. They think it's great. <laughs> I didn't take it out one week and they were like, where's the drum? Where's the drum? I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it out. Anyway, so enough of me waffling on. Uh, thank you for watching and I will maybe see you tomorrow. Bye.